My name is Mark Faber, and I'm Executive Vice President and General Manager of Texas Motor Speedway. I am back living in Texas after 17 years in uh, Kansas City and Las Vegas, and so we, we missed we miss Texas, we love Texas, we have Texas roots, and so we're just pumped to be back. Now, your 17 years uh, in Vegas and Kansas, you, you helped build a program, I believe, out in the uh, stadium and everything with, with the football program out in Vegas. And, uh, Arenas. Arenas. So yeah. I, left, I left here to join Anschutz Entertainment Group based in Los, uh, Los Angeles. So uh, AEG first launched Staples Center in 1999. Uh, which is now Crypto.com Arena, and Phil Anschutz had purchased the Los Angeles Kings back then. So he d developed Staples Center, LA Live, Lakers played there, the Clippers played there till they um, you know, moved to their new arena. And then from there, AEG has grown into five continents and multiple properties worldwide. So they reached out to me uh, back in 2005 and said, we're building an arena in your hometown of Kansas City, do you want to go back and be a part of that? And so it was really tough to leave Texas. Uh, my wife is from Abilene, went to Abilene Cooper High School, went to Texas Tech undergrad. She went to Baylor Nursing School. Our two children were born at Baylor Medical. My mom went to SMU, uh, but was raised in Kansas City. And so that was kind of an incentive to go back home. Um, to Kansas City to be a part of that project. So we developed Sprint Center, downtown Kansas City, as a part of the downtown revitalization. And I was the first, as we say, boots on the ground for AEG to be a part of that development and design process and community. And then fast forward, and AEG says we're doing it again in Las Vegas. We're doing a joint venture with MGM Resorts, and we're going to build a world-class world arena. Do you want to do the same thing? So we said yes, we headed west, and we built T-Mobile Arena, uh, which is arguably one of the top three to five arenas in the world. I think it's the best, but uh, has all great events out there, and you're right, I come from a different background of 130 to 150 events a year, and UFC, and boxing, and concerts, and Pac-12 Men's Championship basketball, and sporting events. Uh, so my background is not motorsports, but it's sports and entertainment, and motorsports is sports and entertainment. How do you bring that here to a fan base that is very much different? Now we all like some of those other issues, but it's it's a different world. How do you how do you resonate with the fan base that you have uh, in, in in the NASCAR racing world and IndyCar because you've got some of that here too. I do have some. Yeah, we have IndyCar. I, I was with an IndyCar team briefly, so uh, we raced here 1997, and that was the A.J. Foyt, Ari Leyendyke, dust up at, at uh, Victory Lane. And uh, I was at the first NASCAR race here back when it opened. And I also went to the Rolling Stones concert that was here. So sports and entertainment has evolved significantly since this iconic facility opened. At the end of the day, what the most important thing is for, for me, for us, for Marcus Smith, Smith Family Speedway Motorsports is the guest fan experience on the weekends that we have here. Whatever the events are, but obviously we're talking about racing. At the end of the day, what can we do to enhance the guest experience? The racing is paramount and we get that, but what can fans experience when they come onto our campus and our footprint here that are supplementary, complementary to the event experience? We want to make it an event uh, beyond the racing. And the racing, again, is core. So we're going to have Daughtry do a pre-race concert. All-Star Weekend, we had Blake Shelton, right? We're going to have Fan Activation Zone open for the weekend. So we're going to have rattlesnake shows. We're going to have Cirque performers. We're going to have wood carving. We're going to have trackside live stage interview, Q&A with drivers. We're going to have a lot of fun things out here for people to do. So when you come out here, you're going to say, wow, that was a great day for my entire family. And obviously you've got the Christopher Bell thing going on with you, but that has brought up a, a bunch of local people, grassroots, and I was speaking with, with Kurt Busch this morning because his brother and his nephew are racing in that event, and he's like, glad to see you're involved in you know, the, younger, the younger drivers and things like that. 
get reaching out and doing stuff like that to amateur racers and younger drivers, does that also help you reach out to new fans and to, to want, make them want to come or come back to Texas Motor Speedway? Great question, and that's one of the reasons why we did that and why Marcus Smith wanted to do that with the sprint cars, and they were on the track last night, and it was fantastic to, to see that, right? So you're exactly right. How can we reach out to maybe a same demographic but a different demo? You're exactly right, the younger crowd. So we want to grow our fan base collectively, not only here but obviously NASCAR and motorsports. And so just like other leagues and other teams and other sports are trying to reach a new demographic. That's what we're trying to do here. That's just another part of it. <clears throat> You're the third guy to hold this role in 15 months. Eddie had the huge tenure. Rod came in, I guess, and, and as an interim, he's a lawyer, legal background, and then you stepped in as this permanent position here. Um, what's, your, what's your future? What do, you, what do you look forward to? Well, <clears throat> Eddie obviously laid a great foundation for his tenure here, and so did Rob. Rob did a great job in his year that he was here, and you're right, I'm the third GM in 15 months. Rob was, uh, as, you, as you know, the GM, but Marcus said, Rob, you do such a great job as a legal counsel for TMS in the state of Texas. We want to take advantage of your skill set and all the th great things that you can do on a corporate level and so that's when, you know, he reached out to me and, and said, are you interested? So faith, family, friends, and fun, those are the core values, right? So when he reached out, we wanted to get back to family. And so I come from a different optics and a different background. And you're right. <clears throat> Eddie was motorsports. Rob's motorsports. I wasn't. IndyCar, I have some experience. I did some consulting for ISC for Daytona when they're going through their renovations, as well as uh, back then PIR, as it was known in Phoenix. So I have t had touches with motorsports, but I come from the sports and entertainment world. So my viewpoint is, number one, as I said earlier, what can we do to enhance the fan experience when they come here? And really, even when we announce events. Number two, I come from the content business. So yes, we lost the All-Star Race this year, we understand what that means for NASCAR. 75 years of tradition go back to your roots at North Wilkesboro Speedway, which, by the way, is under the Speedway Motorsports umbrella, so it's a part of the family. So we understand that. We'd love to get it back in 2024, uh, but we're in the content business. So we're going to have two or three major right, racing events a year here, depending on scheduling, you know, huge events. What else can we do from a content standpoint on an ongoing basis? Last weekend, we had Good Guys Automotive Show, where we had so many people here and so many cars, it was fantastic for the weekend. What can we do to program the facility and take a look at maybe some other things that haven't been done at this facility and utilize it year-round? Texas Motor Speedway has, uh, it's no secret that there have been some of my colleagues written about, you know, getting people to the track and then the drivers you know this week chase complained about some of the things the changes to the track with your background of your your you know uh consulting with with uh isc on on their facilities at, at the rebuilds is that something that is in the cards here and does kind of backing off of a of a schedule give you that time that you might need to look at some some major changes to uh, texas motor speedway as a whole and the racing product so my consulting focused on when Daytona was reducing capacity and talking through that, talking about fan experience, fan amenities, both grandstand, infield, and premium seating, sponsorships, fan activations as a part of that. So the structure of this facility, and fans will see this this weekend, as a part of what are we trying to do for the fans, and you talk about reconfiguration, so we have uh, enhanced seating in the grandstands that'll be launched, so you can have your own little area with additional leg room, you can have a food and, and beverage drink rail, you can bring your cooler in, you have space to set your cooler. This is gonna be a great uh, setup for fans. The second thing uh, that Marcus did was launch the world's largest belly-up bar. And I don't know if you saw that in, in March, but it launched in March. 
So you go out the grandstands and you can go from turn four all the way to turn one. You can literally belly up to the bar, have a drink, and you can watch the action on the track and experience it in the grandstands. And then the third pillar is the new concourse bars that we're developing right now, literally putting the finishing touches on for this weekend. So over 7,000 square feet of bars, and there's three of them on the main concourse. And what's beautiful is that you can now belly up to those bars. And we've opened up in the grandstand seating, I mean, a, a visual capacity, so that when you're belly up to the bar, you can watch the action on the track. So typically before, if you're walking on the concourse and you're buying food and beverage or merch or just enjoying your day, you can't see the action on the track. Now, you can belly up to the bar and you can watch the action on the track. So this is going to be a pretty cool experience for fans, and that's what we're trying to do. I know the driver's issues are not necessarily the grandstands. It's about what's the racing going to be like on Saturday and Sunday. Marcus has already been analyzing that well before I have in the leadership team at Speedway Motorsports, as well as our leadership team here. So what we want to see is 40 next-gen vehicles racing on Sunday for the first time going 500 miles because we haven't had that. We had the all-star race, which is a much different format, as you know. So we want to see how the racing is on Sunday and then take that into account as a part of what might or might not be done going forward. Now, um, there's one other issue with scheduling at NASCAR. We talked about moving the championship race around. A lot of people say that Texas Motor Speedway may never get a championship race. However, the state of Texas would welcome it with lots of revenue and hotel occupancy money and things of that nature. Is that something that SMI and, and Texas Motor Speedway is looking for at some point to get into that rotation uh, for a possible uh, championship race here at the, you know, the third or fourth largest you know, metropolitan area in the country? I haven't been a part of any of those discussions with uh, SMI or NASCAR. Again, I've been on the job for a month. So our focus is the race, races this weekend and what we can do for the drivers, for the owners, for the fans, and all the stakeholders involved. So, but as I said, we're in the content business. So yes, if we have an opportunity to host something like that, we sure do. That'll be a very competitive process as I, as, as we know, that'll be a competitive process. Yes, this is a huge market, and the state of Texas is especially important, I know, to NASCAR, and I know it is to Speedway Motorsports and us, as well as the surrounding region, because we do have a lot of fans. We have fans coming down, uh, I was in a meeting yesterday, we have fans coming down from Chicago that have bought tickets and from Kansas and everywhere. So. It's not necessarily just the Metroplex, and that's our core area in the state of Texas, but we have fans coming here from everywhere. So we'll take as much as we can get, but you know, right now I haven't been involved in any of those discussions. And I'll wrap up real quick. I appreciate your time. Uh, I know you're busy. Visions, surprises coming. You know, tell the fans uh, what, what they can expect. I think that they'll see the fan enhancements that we've done, number one. I think they'll see the entertainment that we've added and a lot of uh, the new things that you'll see on the enter entertainment. We have all of that coming, plus we have Fort Hood, so we have men and women from Fort Hood coming that'll be out there and we'll be showing Tank and other things that they do and the fine, you know, young men and women that serve our country and protect us. So that's going to be another great thing for the fans. I think they'll walk around the concourses and they'll see the new amenities that we've done. We also are opening a grab-and-go location right across from that main bar that I mentioned earlier. You literally can go in and you grab a Coke, you grab a Bud Light, you grab a water, you grab some food, you, you're in and out. Talk about speed of service, you don't miss any action or very few minutes of action or seconds of action when you do that. We'll have new merchandise there on the concourse as well. So we're again talking about the amenities um, for people coming here. And I think you'll see how staff our staff operates about the guest experience, about how warm, friendly, and welcoming, and what we want to do for the fan experience, because we want them to come back, obviously, for our, our truck race and our IndyCar race in April, and then, of course, our Xfinity and NASCAR uh, races in September. 
And this weekend, obviously, there are still tickets available if people want to come. There are still tickets available, so go to TexasMotorSpeedway.com, TexasMotorSpeedway.com, and we still have playoff packages available for as low as $99, and we also have uh, single race tickets for $49 available. Man, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Welcome to Texas. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.